This is Lahir Rahman Ibn. In the previous video, we covered the first two sections of chapter one of my book, Islamic Economics, The Polar Opposite of Capitalist Economics. In this uh, video, we will cover sections 1.3 and 1.4. Very briefly summarize the first two sections. They concerned the archaeology of knowledge. How did the social science emerge in Europe? Well, because it was because of rejection of Christianity led to the necessity of creating other ways of organizing societies not based on Christianity. And so it's very useful to think of social science as a replacement for the religion of Christianity. Once you reject God after life, Judgment Day, then it is natural to emphasize life of this world. And so Western economics is mostly concerned with maximization of pleasure, power and profits. And this is not compatible with Islamic values. So it's going deeper into this history because it tells us a lot about how uh, the forces which shaped uh, the birth of economics. So how did the European transition to secular thought affect uh, economic discipline as it is today? Uh, we know that economics started out as a branch of moral philosophy and today it claims to be objective and rational and purely secular. But these claims are false and it is essential to see through this. The word rationality actually hides within it a lot of assumptions about the world and about our uh, the appropriate conduct in this world. In particular, once the uh, wars between the Catholics and Protestants, which took place on a large scale, both internally and with foreign uh, nations, it became clear that society could not be thought of as a single body united for the pursuit of common goals. So it was necessary to reconceptualize society as a group of different factions with different goals at war with each other. And uh, the politics had to make, keep the peace between uh, these warring groups. So what could be the common goal in a society where the groups do not have common goals? That led to the emergence of freedom and wealth. These are not actually primary goals. Nobody wants freedom for itself. They want freedom to pursue some their goals. And similarly, wealth is not desirable for itself, but because it enables you to pursue goals. So these two secondary goals became primary in uh, a secular society. And this process is of great importance because in Islam, freedom and wealth are both secondary. They are a means to an end. They are not ends in, in themselves. But in a secular society, these means become ends in themselves. So social science had to be created on grounds which would attract consensus among warring groups. So it had to be built on sort of objective and rational foundations acceptable to all parties. But what was not realized that the underground, the background assumptions on which it was built were assumptions which were agreed to by all parties within Europe, but not uh, around the world. Uh, these ideas, these, frame, these moral frameworks which underlie Western social sciences were spread throughout the globe through the process of global colonization and conquest, which essentially amounts to colonization of minds. In more recent times, many people have seen through the facade of objectivity of the social sciences and many people have come to recognize that social science is really highly Eurocentric. It uh, builds on European experience and is not generally applicable. But this idea that social science is a science like physical science and it's universal is still the dominant uh, view. And this is the basis of Western education. So this dominant view is transmitted to all students around the globe. So we can contrast with Islamic social science. Islam brought a message to the world which led to organization of societies along radically different principles. And these methods were in use successfully for more than a thousand years before colonization ended up destroying these uh, social structures. 
and even the memory of these structures was lost so that in modern times the Muslims are lost and they are attempting to adapt alien institutions to Islamic societies and this has led to major troubles for uh, developing Islamic views on how societies should function. Islamic economics is part of this development which seeks to rebuild the economic discipline on Islamic foundations. We look at the concepts uh, that are taken for granted in uh, modern economic theory. It seems clear that these emerged due to European historical exper experiences. Utility theory was developed after the rejection of uh, Christianity as a basis for determining morality. Morality was now to be determined by pleasure and pain. If something is pleasurable, then it's good. If something is painful, then it's evil. So this and many, any other examples show that the economic sciences are based on European historical experience. Because this is obvious, the question arises, why does it pose to be universal? Why do not economists understand that this is built on European experiences and doesn't apply to all societies? Well, the answer is complex, but a simple uh, rendition of it is that global colonization created a superiority complex and West, uh, Western societies got to think that we are the most advanced societies and all other societies will come to resemble us when they grow up and mature. While this is obviously false, this remains a widely accepted idea. Uh, Edward Said has done an excellent debunking of this in his book, classic book, Orientalism. One of the factors which has had a tremendous influence in shaping economics is the deification of science. This is what happened when after the reject, rejection of religion, uh, Europeans did not have any solid grounds on which to build the base of knowledge. So they agreed to regard science as the sole uh, valid uh, methodology for producing knowledge. Uh, the word science used in social science is a reflection of the enormous prestige of science that uh, Europeans uh, gave uh, after rejection religion. Uh, similarly, the use of formal and mathematical methods is a reflection of the prestige of physics and not because these methods are really appropriate to the subject. In fact, we cannot use scientific methods to study human beings and statistics and societies because uh, human beings are, have free will and they are not subject to mathematical laws of motion. However, for various reasons, Western intellectuals continue to believe that the trajectories of societies and the behavior of individuals can be predicted by mathematical equations, even though this is manifestly not the case. This axiomatic methodology, uh, making some assumptions about how human beings and societies behave according to mathematical laws, has led to hopelessly bad models. Uh, economic models of human behavior, of firm behavior, and of the formation of prices by equilibrium is overwhelmingly rejected by empirical evidence. And I've cited a few papers which provide this evidence. Nonetheless, economists stick to these theories. So it becomes a mystery as to why economists remain committed to theories which are strongly rejected by the data. Uh, a detailed explanation is given in this paper which is uh, listed on this page, but very briefly this is due to the philosophy of logical positivism which will be discussed in the next and final portion of this uh, talk about chapter 1.